My grandfather was a left-wing seafarer, so I love stories about the Maritime Union. The Maritime Union had its inaugural Youth National Conference recently. Paddy Crumlin spoke, and there were lots of young people excited about being in the Maritime Union. Here's what they had to say. Give me the support, and I guess for the rest of my life, in a funny way, I've been paying it back, and that's what you guys have to understand. I guess part of the value of what you got, the luck of what you're into, the capacity that you've got to keep it together. No one can keep it together but you young people, you know? Same as me, that's what I'm doing here. I guess I could have done my second mate's ticket. Now the chairman of the super fund and this and that, there's plenty of other opportunities in life, but uh, a part of the, the issue about what we're dealing with is friendship, comradeship, uh, and understanding about how life really works. Great sense of loyalty to each other, uh, comradeship and uh, politics. I had an insight into a life that I could never see um, when you did travel and you saw the difference between, for example, how seafarers were treated in this country and how they were treated in Papua New Guinea or in Fiji or in Africa or in South America. That's a very telling thing uh, to go out there and load and discharge or lash cargoes or go down in the engine room on, the, on an Australian flag vessel and see another vessel tied up alongside and you're earning 15, 20 times what they're earning that you're at sea for six weeks on and six weeks off, or 10 weeks on and 10 weeks off, and they're there for 12 months, 18 months at a time. You're earning $45,000 a year in those days, yeah, probably these days about 65 or 70 on a two cruise system, so you've got an annual income every week. And those guys are down there working 12 months for a quarter of that, or a fifth of that. Unless you're an imbecile, you draw some political conclusions about what's happening in the world around you. And the great uh, thing about our union is that uh, we haven't got imbeciles running it. We've had very dedicated and good people, and uh, not just from an elected position as delegates, it's people that believe and understand about what they're doing and have a viewpoint about life that it isn't about the elite, we don't have to fear them. It isn't about the merchant bankers and the, the big business and the CEOs, we don't have to fear them. It isn't about politicians, we don't have to fear them. All you really have to fear is your inability to be able to deliver what you're doing intelligently and coherently and in a way that can stand up and engage, win them over sometimes, stand them up, stand them on their head at other times, as we showed in the Patrick dispute, have the courage of your convictions. They're very important values. They're things that you really aspire to as a young person because you want to live for something. You want to live your father's life or your mother's life or your boss's life. You want to live your own life. And what the union does give you and what this conference is about is that you've got to find your voice in the union, of your vision, generation Y, whatever you want to call yourself or however you describe yourself. You've got to define your vision about what you want for the rest of your working life, and not only that, what you want to leave for other people to realise the same opportunity you've got. Um, and you've got good things to aspire to. You might think it's your job, right? He says, it's not your job, you're just more than for the bloke who's going to come after you. So that's our responsibility now. Because we have to hold on to the conditions we've got, improve them, and don't give them up. Because whatever we, whatever we have to get suffered on us is going to be brought on young people, but we're going to follow you into the industry too. When you, you look that we've got over 2,000 members, when I looked at all the figures, over 2,000 members um, of 30 and under, and that's a lot of members. Yeah, it was a successful country. Oh, bloody hell. Not, not only what we learnt, but the mateships and the camaraderie that we take out of it all value these friendships for life. It wasn't, it wasn't one group, it was everyone's a group together. What, what are you going to take back and report back to the younger blokes? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the younger blokes I'm just going to take back to them and just say, look, look the, the stuff that we learnt, there's, there's prices and if you want to go places in the union, the door's always open. So the things that we learnt and stuff is just going just gonna to help myself and better myself as a, 
the end of this. What are some of the things that were the best over the last three days? Well, the things that I really took out of it, and myself, was probably like the, the delegates and the networking that we take out of it, the your rights at work, um, the international programs that the union work in conjunction with, and um, yeah, just, just everything in general was really, really handy to know and will help us out in the future. For becoming a delegate for for, for the reasons of representing the membership. So what we need to do is to discuss how, what makes a good delegate in the first place and what stops people from becoming delegates. So we need to, we need to discuss those things now. So firstly, what makes a good delegate? Yeah, we're just aiming to just get people there, just voice their opinions and yeah, just start a, start a, union, start a union in this workplace. And at the end of all this, um, we started an occupational health and safety committee after we had a union. After we had the union in, we started our HNS committee just to just to make sure things do operate the way that they're supposed to. And obviously, at the end of at the end of everything, we want to get a delegate structure in place, just so there's, there's a proper structure what the boss can look look on the unions and he can see a structure, he can see we're there. We've got a structure, we mean business. And at the end of it all, the biggest goal is obviously to get our to get our workplace on the EBA. So. By the, end of that, by the end of that process, it's a pretty long process. We allowed, I think we allowed three months to do the process, and by the end of that, we had our workplace. We were all covered under an EBA and a lot better for it. Collective agreement. Collective agreement. Everyone, in your opinion, what do you think makes a good delegate? Being the person who can uh, rationalise, talk to a boss when what well, come to the table, meet halfway. Not meet halfway, but be diplomatic, you know, you got a deal of uh, you know, uh, explain to the boss exactly what you're doing. Have uh, negotiation skills. Yeah, yeah. negotiation skills. Yeah. Good communication skills helps too, being able to, you know, make sure you talk to them and find out, you know, where everyone's at. There isn't, there isn't many, especially in my, where we work, um, casual um, delegates, and that's because there's quite a lot of um, reluctance to have casual delegates because we don't know how long we're going to be there and we don't know, we, we don't have as much job security and therefore the training isn't there for us. Um, but I do think it's quite an important issue that there should be casual um, delegates, especially in casual issues should be addressed because that's something that all the industries are going to face is um, increased casualisation. I think that's a really important one that we should encourage more casual people to become delegates. Boy. <laughs> right, let's get us over and done. Um, <laughs> I think something that we touched on more than anybody else was, was trustworthiness. You've got to know that if you go to your Delo, that they're going to treat your um, issue with um, a certain element of trustworthiness. You're not going to tell lots of people, especially if the, um, it might be quite a personal issue. What are the barriers to being a delegate? Um, Fear, fear of job security. Uh, what's that? Conf conflicts of interest between unions. Not knowing how to read. Can I eat glasses? Four eyes. The conference was a beauty, I reckon. Uh, not only did was I made aware of what I already know, but uh, I learned a lot from it too. Like, uh, you know, how to organise a workplace, how to uh, who to ring, who not to ring. You know, like just a lot of things were learnt. Um, uh, some of the issues were uh, international solidarity. International solidarity is just uh, absolutely fundamental to the essence of what the MUA stands for. And the MUA has always based its policies on the belief that international solidarity and peace are fundamental cornerstones to ensuring that economic, social <coughs> and political justice is achievable to workers throughout the world. I think it was really good. I just hope that what's learned and the um, positivity that's been generated is um, maintained and, and, and grows.
and there's all those people that you can rely on. These guys are just the same as us. They're working their jobs, they're, they're getting on with their lives, but they care enough to get active, the same as we do, and that, that's a real hopeful sign. We've got our back up. <laughs> uh, this youth conference is, uh, is a long-awaited thing, like it's something that's got to happen. You know, they're talking every three years. Um, if that's got to be, that's got to be, but I reckon it's definitely something that has to happen regularly. Isn't it great to see young maritime workers or young people anywhere fired up about politics? Nice work, Paddy. After the break, we talk to a passionate priest.